more clues. We have with us uh, Dr. Bassem Shamma, uh, a prominent Egyptologist. Dr. Bassem, thank you so much for talking to Nile TV. Thank you for having me. Well, uh, Nicholas Reeves' theory, w what are the clues? What's behind this story? Okay, it's a very exciting, it's very attractive. Uh, but I learned in the last 34 years that uh, we don't rush into things. We don't rush, as I heard now, the, uh, the minister is saying this is going to be the greatest excavation of the 21st century and all of this. This is a bit rushy. This is a bit quick. This is a mm -hmm. bit fast. We have to be a little bit cautious yes. until we... Yeah. A bit cautious mm -hmm. and patient and... Mm -hmm. uh, because you can actually introduce loads and loads of hypotheses and then nothing come out of it. And in some other cases, chance play a very important role in excavation. So this is how Egyptology works. So um, Reeves is proposing that behind all those words, he's saying that this tomb, which we've been knowing since 1922 until, well, yesterday, it was the tomb of Tutankhamun. Now he's suggesting that Tutankhamun was rushed into an already carved tomb for Queen Fertiti in the Valley of the Kings uh, in the West Bank of Luxor. And he was a kind of a guest on that tomb when he died almost 19 years of age. Also right. he's suggesting mm -hmm. that this colored scene, and that was obvious in, in your report, that the scene that we've been reading in hieroglyphs as Tutankhamun as a king in a colored scene in the burial chamber is none other than the queen Nefertiti herself, while the name Cartouche in front of the king is Tutankhamun. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if he's confused or I don't know if he's trying to, to make an attractive theory. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it a show or is it a serious a study, uh, especially uh, that this man has been working in the Valley of the Kings in the 2000s, and then he was stopped by the Supreme Antiquities, mm -hmm. and he was revoked, his permit was revoked, and then some years after he was cleared uh, by the Egyptian Antiquities, so like this. But I say I'll wait until we see. If this room is right behind, they call it the Phantom Room, if, right. uh, if this room that he's saying that it could have the, uh, the mummy of Nefertiti is there, and if the mummy is there, how did he know that it is Nefertiti? Uh, mm -hmm. This is my question. So, uh, who could it be? If there is a mummy, it could be anybody. It could be Kea. Kea is the mother of Tutankhamun, not mm -hmm. Nefertiti. Now, he's, I also read that in one case he suggested that Nefertiti would be the mother. Of, mm -hmm. Tutankhamun. of course, that's historically very debatable because we've been years and years knowing that Kea and uh, Kea was the mother of Tutankhamun and Nefertiti brought Akhenaten six daughters. Mm -hmm. um, she didn't bring him any sons. Right. And that's why he had to, Tutankhamun had to marry one of her daughters in order to reach the throne of Egypt. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I don't know, the loads and loads of hypotheses made by Reeves, I don't think his hypothesis or his Introductions are strong enough for me to believe that this is the tomb of Nefertiti. Who would bring Nefertiti from Tal al Amarna when she died there? Mm -hmm. Who would bring her from Elmenia all the way to Luxor to the West Bank and then bury her in the Valley of the Kings? Yeah. Not the Valley of the Queens. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll have to wait and see. I'm not judgy, but I'll have to wait and see. If it is proven, so salutation to Reeves and his gang. Yeah. If not, it yeah. Then we'll have to stop uh, listening to him again. Right. Dr. Bassem, if it proves uh, uh, true and a serious study, how far is it going to give us more clues uh, concerning uh, the legendary beauty Nefertiti? Well, of course, first of all, that means that Nefertiti is now performing on walls of our tombs and temples in forms of males. Mm. Um, something that was very exclusive to Madame Hatshepsut herself. Hatshepsut was always known that she was depicted as a male, uh, but now, uh, if, if, if true, if Reese is, is right, then Nefertiti would be another queen who uh, performed as, uh, as a male. That's number one. Number two, it would give us a deep thought of why the mummies of Tal al-Amarna were rushed into uh, Luxor or Thebes 
um, after Amarna has been, you know, destroyed. Why? Why should you bring all the kings mm -hmm. that the high priests of Amun hated so much, like Akhenaten, like Nefertiti, like all those guys, and bring them back to, to Luxor? Well, leave them there in Tal al Amarna, where they liked, where they moved away, where they migrated. Why bring them over again? Why bring your enemies back again, your rivals? Mm -hmm. So that will, will, will answer a huge question mark, which says that the high priest of Amun, who would permit the burial of the Tal al-Amarna characters in Thebes, would one of two things. Whether they were so tolerant, and this I doubt very much, but they could be very tolerant to the way that, yes, we can bring them back, or the followers of Akhenaten and Nefertiti would rather see their kings in Luxor, in Thebes, than seeing them in Tal al-Amarna, which means that they are not believers in Tal al-Amarna anymore, and mm. that's rewriting the whole chapter of this part of our history. Right, uh, so the pharaohs never stop to dazzle the world. Dr. Bassem Shama, a prominent Egyptologist, thank you so much for talking to Nile TV and the debate for tonight. It's again uh, debatable whether it, it is going to be proven that the alleged hidden uh, chamber in King uh, Tut's tomb belongs to Nefertiti or not, as uh, Dr. Ashama was just uh, saying. Anyhow, it is going to give us definitely more clues concerning Nefertiti and that important era. Well, back to our topic for tonight and the fruitful discussion at the UN General Assembly, the President uh, in his